Primal uh, religion is a term that some people have adopted to talk about uh, religions that are um, non-written religions, religions without written scriptures. Uh, they're trying to get to the, how does one, how do we refer to what some people would call traditional religions. But the problem with traditional religion is that many traditional religions have got scriptures. But most African religions don't have scriptures. Uh, Polynesian religions wouldn't have scriptures. Uh, Australian Aboriginal religions haven't got scriptures. Um, Northwest Coast American native religions don't have scriptures. So what, what do we, how do we call these religions and what's their central focus? What, what's, what holds them together. And uh, the term primal has been suggested for, as a good way of getting at their essence because what they're doing is they're dealing with some sort of very basic experiences that human beings have of the divine or of uh, transcendence. And so what do we talk about? And I, I've given an example in other discussions about uh, people seeing ghosts, but also the, the, sometimes one gets a premonition uh, and people don't do things. I remember meeting um, a, a young woman once who had been on one of the flights that was, uh, there was a flight took off from Chicago airport and it crashed. This was many years ago. And she'd been booked on that flight and she got to the gate and something told her not to get on it. And she didn't. I mean, most of us have that sort of feeling that you shouldn't do it at some point. But how often does anyone really act on this thing? In this case, this woman acted on it and the plane crashed and everyone was killed. Um, how does one explain that sort of thing? And this is what I mean by primal. Um, I attended a fascinating um, meeting at uh, quite near uh, San Francisco in the Napa Valley at a place called Camp K. Now, Camp K was the not notorious uh, Mooney uh, camp where they took people to try and convince them to become Moonies. And so I went along for a weekend to Camp K to see what they did. And um, there were all sorts of horror stories about the place, but it, quite frankly, it wasn't really that bad. It was like a sort of Christian uh, weekend camp in many respects. But one of the things they did, which was very clever, was they woke up every morning, they got people up at about seven, and they went to the top of this hill, which was very nicely laid out. It, was, it had been an old girl guides camp, and uh, there was a campfire area and everything. And they got people in little groups. And there were a number of people who were members of the Unification Church, and then most of the other people were like myself who weren't. And the people in the Unification Church started talking. They said, you know, what we want you to do is to reflect on the meaning of life and of spirituality. And uh, just to help you do this, we want to tell you some of the things that happened to us. And they gave what uh, evangelical Christians would call testimonies. Uh, things that happened to them which were quite extraordinary. They'd been atheists and something strange happened to them which shook up their expectations. That they, they had a, a sense of uh, someone. Uh, one person said that their grandmother had been dead for about 10 years and she appeared to them in a dream. And they to told them that they'd got to stop uh, the way they were going on and that what they were doing because they were on a self-destructive uh, pattern and they needed to find religion. And they found the Moonies and became Moonies. But uh, they laid this out and then they said, and this was the clever part, now we would like you to say, have you ever had an experience like this? Have you ever had a, an experience that really does not fit with the materialistic world that everyone says we live in? Have you had something that makes you believe that there may be a spiritual world around us? And then they left it open. And the amazing thing was that people started talking. And they had all sorts of odd stories. Things that had happened to them that they, you know, somebody had been returning home one day when they were about 10 years old and um, on their way home when they were walking back to their house, they knew their grandmother had died. And they got home and their mother said, you know, I've got bad news for you, grandma's died. Um, how do we explain this sort of thing? And this is sort of the primal core of religion. I think you find it in the New Testament. You find people have religious experiences and then an interpretation is given. 
And this is where the great traditions come in, that uh, there is this spiritual world that's around us, but how do we interpret it? How do we understand it? Do we see it in a materialistic thing? Do we say, well, this is a psychological quirk, they've got a psychological problem, which would be one way of saying it, or do we say God's speaking to you? And if we say God's speaking to you, how do we, which God? Is it uh, Christ or is it Krishna or is it Allah? Uh, who's speaking into this world? And I think this is where religions become very tricky because it's a matter of truth claims come in. But nevertheless, these truth claims build on real experiences. And if you talk to sincere Muslims, if you talk to sincere Buddhists, if you talk to sincere Christians or Jews, they'll have some sort of religious experience that has profoundly shaken their lives. And it is this shaking of a person's foundations that really uh, is the primal core, and then the religious interpretation follows. And then we get onto questions of truth, which religious interpretation is correct? And that's another question.